Planes began spraying insecticide Thursday in the Miami neighborhood where officials say at least 15 people were infected by local mosquitoes. That comes as the National Institutes of Health launched a clinical trial of a vaccine intended to prevent the virus. Dr. Anthony Fauci is director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. He is in Bethesda, Maryland. Thank you for joining us, sir. The, Good to be uh, with you. The first Zika vaccine is now being tested by the National Institutes of Health. Where are we with that vaccine and, and what are you hoping to see from the first phase of testing? Well, this is what we call a phase one trial. We started it a couple of days ago and we have a plan to uh, vaccinate 80 normal individuals uh, between the ages of 18 and 35. And the fundamental question we're asking, at least in the immediate sense, is it safe? And importantly, does it induce the kind of immune response that you would predict would be protective? So it's the first step in a series of things that you do to get a vaccine. When we get to the end of that study, which will likely be at the end of 2016, likely in December, if we fulfill the criteria, namely it's safe and it does induce that response that we're hoping for, we want to transition very quickly in early 2017 into the next phase, which is called the phase 2B. That has a much more, uh, a higher number of individuals, anywhere from 2,400 to 5,000. And the fundamental question of the phase 2B is does this particular vaccine work? Is it effective? and preventing Zika. So obviously you have to do that phase 2B in a place, a region, a country in which they have active transmission of Zika because if you don't have any infections, you'll never know if it works. So that's one that we're going to do in multiple sites, uh, some in South America, some in the Caribbean, and even some in the United States continental. Uh, in, in February, the White House asked for $1.9 billion to fight Zika. Congress is now on a seven-week recess without having authorized the money. How important is that money in the fight against Zika? Uh, that money is really critically important. Uh, up to now, we have been doing what we've been doing. And when I say we, I mean the CDC and us here at the NIH. We've been doing what we've been doing on money that we've borrowed from other diseases. Now, we've reached the point, it's the critical point essentially right now, if we don't get the money that the president asked for imminently, what will happen is that the preparation that we have to make to go into that phase two trial smoothly in the beginning of 2017, after we finish the phase one trial, that will be delayed. And if that's the case, that would really be unfortunate because we, what we would hope to do was to transition very nicely from the end of the phase one into the phase two to determine if this vaccine works. And that is something that will be impeded if we don't get this money very quickly. There was a considerable amount of funding that was set aside to fight Ebola. Has, has that been a source of funds for this particular, these, these efforts? Well, what is, has happened is that some of the money that has been not spent on Zika in the sense, not that it's not needed because there's a lot of things still to do with Ebola. Some of the money that was not spent on Ebola has been shifted over. For example, we were given, we at the NIH, $47 million of Ebola money to spend on Zika. But as we mentioned, that amount of money quickly runs out if we don't get new additional money. Okay. How, how confident are you that the cases we were talking about in Florida were locally contracted? Fairly confident that those uh, uh, cases that we're hearing about, those 15 cases in Florida, just north of Miami, are local transmitted cases. There was no travel history on those individuals, and there was no indication that they had any kind of contact with someone who was infected. Given the number of travel-related cases in Florida, there are close to 400 travel-related cases, and the fact that the mosquitoes that efficiently transmit Zika are plentiful in Florida, it's not at all surprising that you had this transition to local transmission where a mosquito bit someone that was a travel-related case and then wound up biting somebody who never left the continental United States and never left the Florida area. So that's precisely with what happened with what we're seeing right now in Florida. All right, Dr. Anthony Fauci, thank you so much for joining us.